Well, hello again, friends. My name is Reverend Thomas Harper, and I'm the pastor of St. Luke's United Methodist Church in Bryan College Station. And this is Weekly Theistic Reflections, where each week I take a verse of Scripture, unpack that Scripture a little bit, maybe talk about what's going on in the context of that Scripture, how that Scripture might relate to what's going on in our world today, or just share some thoughts that I have about that Scripture. If you're new here, I invite you to take a look around the channel. If you like the content, please click like and subscribe, because that helps me out a lot, uh, as well as click that notification bell so that you will be notified every single time I post one of these videos. I post a new video every single Thursday, and as always, if you think someone would benefit from the content of this video, I invite you to share that video with them in order to be a blessing to them. I've entitled this episode, David, a man after God's own heart. The scripture that I chose is 2 Samuel 12, verse 21. What is this thing that you have done? For you fasted and wept for the child while he was alive. But when the child died, you arose and you ate food. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. And so recently I just finished up a 11-week sermon series on the life of King David from the Old Testament. I've always been fascinated by David's story just as a general character because over the course of his life he has so many ups and downs in his life. Uh, he was remembered as a man after God's own heart uh, and yet he was very human as well. He stumbled and fell and made mistakes. He was a, not a flat character at all. And yet, I've always wondered about why David was remembered in such a positive light and Saul was remembered in a negative light. I can't help but wonder what, why is what Saul did so much worse than what David would end up doing? But in fact, at least to the human eye, the things that David was guilty of and still forgiven was much worse. Saul, if you remember, held back spoils of war. He gave up offerings when it wasn't his job. He was a little bit too hasty. But in David's life as king, he would commit adultery, essentially committed murder. He would lie and deceive uh, to get himself out of trouble. That moment in his life when he took Bathsheba started a chain reaction of things that uh, had dire consequences, and yet, we still remember him as a man after God's own heart. The prophet Nathan confronts David and says, you are the man, you are the one that took Uriah the Hittite's wife that was not yours. And because you have done this, that child will not live. I think it's important when we consider this text and this story that we remember that there's a difference between consequences for our sin and punishment from God. I think it's important for us to remember that our mistakes, our sin, our brokenness has natural consequences. There are always consequences to our actions. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we should see everything that happens as a result of our sin as direct punishment from God. Sometimes God says, this is not what I wanted for you and your life. But because you have done this, this is going to be the result. And so, a scripture says in 2 Samuel that the child became ill and died. And so this is a pretty low place. It's a pretty low place in scripture for a character that was remembered as a man after God's own heart. This moment in David's life, I think, is so significant. And it's actually what is different between Saul and David. Because Saul, if you go back in that story, you can kind of see that he gets overcome by his pride. His eyes become dark as he gets jealous of everything that's happening to David. And that, over time, just kind of hardens his heart to God's grace in his life. But David, who seemingly did worse things, was able to, in that moment, when the results of his sin came out, was able to get up, was able to lay down his guilt and lay down his shame at God's feet and say, okay, and step back into God's forgiveness again. He allowed himself to be forgiven. He was able to set down his pride and say, I am not this thing that I have done. I am not an adulterer. I am not a murderer. I am not this sin, that horrible sin that I have committed. I am a man after God's own heart. 
That's amazing to me. How is he able to do that? Because a lot of times I think it is our own pride that gets in the way of our relationship with God. We think to ourselves, I got to get back into God's good graces again. I got to earn the right for God to love me again. I got to carry this cross when God says, no, lay it down. I've done all that because of Jesus Christ. We don't need to be defined by life defining moments. Because of the work of God, David was able to walk again in the light. Saul couldn't get over his darkness. David laid it down. And here's why I love the story of David so much. Because if David can be forgiven, then so can we. If David can, after all of those horrible stumbles that he went through, especially in that moment, that life-altering moment, still be remembered as a man after God's own heart. And we can be remembered that way as well. Because of Jesus, you need not be defined by your sin. You need only be defined by him. Here's the question that I want you to ponder. Does David's story somehow give you hope for your own story? While you're here, I want you to check out this video. It's a video I entitled, A Well-Written Character. And it's just more about this, uh, you know, there are not prototypical good guys and bad guys in the real world. And we are not flat characters walking around um, with white hats or black hats declaring kind of who we are. There are a lot of dynamics in life, ups and downs, times we stumble and times we need to get back up. And so if that's you or if you're interested in that, uh, I talk more about what it means to not live with the muck, not live in your sin, but to get up and repent from it and then walk in the light again. If you're in the Bryan College Station area, I invite you to take a look at us. We have a worship service every single Sunday morning at 10 a.m. We also live stream here uh, so you can see some of our past services, get to know us a little bit, um, and see what we're about. But if you are in the area, we'd love to meet you, love to do life and ministry with you. But until next time, friends, know and take comfort that David, in the end, was remembered as a man after God's own heart. Lay down any label that boasts anything but the cross, so that you may walk in his grace and light again. Until then, friends, continue to love each other well. Take care.